Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. Today we're going to be learning about inheritance. At a high level, inheritance means that a class derives its behavior from another class. So generally speaking, we say that class B inherits its behavior from class A, therefore class B can do the same things that class A can do, so it has the same functions as class A, it has the same properties as class A, but it also can have its own properties. We're going to be making an example in Unity, but first I want to show you a diagram that I made. So our example is going to be about animals. We can have many different types of animals. So let's say we can have a cat, a dog, or a snake. And every animal has a name and can make sounds. So if an animal makes a sound, it's just a random sound. We don't know what sound is, but we of course know that cats can make a meow sound and dogs can bark and snake can do some weird sound like s or something like that. So they will have their own specific make sounds function, but they can all do it. And the animal class makes sure of that. Likewise, you will see that the snake can lay an egg. But dogs and cats cannot lay eggs. They do give birth though, since they are both mammals. So you see how two classes that belong to the same category, like a group, like mammals category in the animal kingdom and that kind of things, they can give birth and they share that function. So they can extend or inherit from the mammal behavior because they're both mammal and then mammals like dolphins and humans must be animals as well. So the mammal class will inherit from the animal class. And this kind of relationships is what we call inheritance. So now let's go to a more uh, concrete example here in Unity. I'm going to create three classes for each animal. So I have cat, dog and snake. Let's give this function to each of our animals. Each animal has their own class down there, you can see it. And if this is a game, we could program our cat class to do cat things and our dog class to do dog things and our snake class to do snake things. But sometimes these three animals will have things that they share in common and we would like them to do it even though we don't know what animal they are. Let's make one more class called animal. We will make these three classes inherit from the animal class. So how we make a class inherit from another class, actually every time you make a class in Unity, it already inherits from mono behavior. And that's why you can use the start and the update function, because this start and update function are already dealt with in mono behavior, and you're just using it from that class. So now instead of mono behavior, we want to inherit from the animal class. Same for the dog and same for the cat. Anyways. So now we have this animal class. If I press F12, you can go and see it. In our diagram, we said that every animal has a name and can make a sound. So let's go ahead and make public string name. And let's also create a function called make sound. So this is the animal class. So we want that every animal that we have in our scene on the start is going to make a sound. All right. So make sound. And if we just have an animal, maybe we can debug something like um, a no sound detected or something like that. I don't know. It's just an example. So if this function is like this, we will say no sound detected. But if the animal happens to be a dog, we are going to make a wolf sound. So to do that, we need to overwrite this function from the dog class. So overriding functions. To override this function, first we have to make it virtual. And you simply type the virtual keyword here. And now if you go to the dog function, you can see when I type public override, it 
already offers me the option to overwrite the make sound function. And this here, what base means is actually using the behavior from the base class, the class we inherit from. If I change this to this, you will see that this keyword, you may be familiar with this, is talking about this class here, the specific class that we are currently on, this, that we're here. So for this case, we don't want that because it will show no sound detected. Instead, we want to make a specific function for our dog, and it's going to be woof. So make sound when it's a dog is woof. When it's a snake, we can copy this actually. We overwrite. We're going to do the same thing on the three classes that we have. Um, this is going to be, or I don't know how to do this sound. <laughs> And the cat is going to meow, so uh, meow. I don't even know how to spell meow, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. And that's it. So now when we have different animals in our scene like we do now, so we have a cat, a snake, and a dog, they are different, like different scripts here. You see one is called dog, one is called snake, and one is called cat. You see, they all share the same property that came from animal because they are actually different kinds of animals and when we play this since they have a type of animal you will see they all make their own unique sounds so this comes from the dog this comes from the snake and this comes from the cat okay so this is a function they share in common so we could have something like an array of animals and for each animal, we will make them make their own sound just by calling this function, make sound. So each animal has a sound and they will make it for us, even though we don't know what kind of animal they are. Now, we already talk about the things that these three animals have in common, which is having a name and being able to make sounds. Although their sounds are different, it is still something they share in common. Let's say now that we have another function. For example, the snake can shed skin. So surely this is something you need to the snake because neither the cat or the dog can shed their skin. However, dogs can make holes or dig holes or whatever. So the dog can go ahead and make holes and the cat can climb trees. So you see, even though they are all animals, they still have their unique behavior that is different from each of them, but they also have the behavior that comes from being animals, the things they share in common. And you will see that, for example, if I give a make a field here, public int number of lives, that's the, let's make it nine, is it seven or nine? Let me know in the comments if cats have seven lives or nine lives. I've heard both. Uh, the ski, let's say the snakes have a color, so color. And dogs have a public boolean is good boy. And of course, it, this is true. So there we go. Now you will see that our cat has a number of lives here. It also has a name. Uh, Larry the snake has a color, so we can set the color for the snake, like green or something, I'm not too original. And our dog, uh, let's call it uh, 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 Philip, is a good boy. So they have things in common because all animals have a name, but they also have their specific behavior and specific properties that are unique to a dog, a snake, and a cat. And that's basically how we use inheritance when we're making games. We want to have things in common and we also want to have specific things. And you could go into a deeper level and let's say the dog and the cat inherit from a mammal class. So mammal would inherit from animal and so on. So if you want to know more in detail about like the base keyword and how we can use different tricks, override, protected and more specific terms, let me know in the comments and I will make a video about that. Also go ahead and check the video I made about interfaces, which is also very useful if you're planning to use inheritance. And lastly, please remember to give a like 
and subscribe to my channel. I want to give special thanks to my patrons in Patreon. Thank you very much. Your support really means a lot. I also want to thank you all for sticking so long in this video and I will see you all on the next one.